It's another beautiful day in sunny eastern central Florida. Welcome to Eat Your Backyard. Today I'm just going to take you along with me. <laughs> Part of my day. My little chickens are doing so well. Look at you drinking out of the rake water that was left there last night. Oh, all the chickies came over to see me. Hello, hello. Yeah. It's funny, whenever you touch them, they make the sound. Watch. There you go. If you just touch them, they make that sound. Meow chick chick. Meow chick chick. Meow chick chick. Serious Black will always come. And I find you can, he'll let you pick them up if he... Oh, oh, they're just moving away. They will let you pick them up if you come at them kind of slow. They're enjoying their new roost I made for them. Simply a brown turkey fig branch. Trimmed. I had elaborate ideas of how I was going to use 2x2s two to build a roosting bar back here and then realized this could be a cool way to do it and they seem to like it quite a bit as you can see I've been letting these little chickies free range all around the yard they seem to love that one drawback is they've been eating up my whole carrot patch jumping in my pot of plants and eating up all those too <laughs> so I have to establish boundaries with my beautiful little chickens who are only four months away from beginning to lay eggs. They're already hard at work consuming every bug they can find and fertilizing the backyard. So I'm thinking of one more or two more fruit trees, something that I can do as under story growth, permaculture, food forest, trying to continue to enrich it really this is not ideal and that I don't have a lot of underneath stuff I, but I like to have a lot of grass here because I have a requirement to be able to pass the football with my son and so on and so forth so I'm not going to make this into a complete jungle that wouldn't really serve me at the same time having the right amount of specimen trees I am left with a residual bucket load from my failed experiment of how to capture rabbit manure They've been pretty useful. The chickens love them, use them as roosting stations. I always seem to need a bucket now to get a bucket of rabbit manure or to move dirt or whatever. But these buckets come in handy. But the drawback is, especially in Florida, anywhere that collects water, you're done. There's been so many mosquitoes. And mosquitoes have been really bad, like at biblical level some days here. It's been a real exercise for me just to tolerate the bites. You see these little chickies, they naturally just go back into their coop. They love it in there. In the afternoons, I find them all huddled up and they're just laying around, preening, taking dust baths. What we've been doing is just opening up the coop door and letting them free every morning. See, there it goes, right in there. Of course, their food is up there. That's something that a cool guy I met at Tractor Supply told me, which was that it's better just to place their food in one place and they'll learn to start going there so it's absolutely happened rather than put it all over the place so I, I do leave water around in different places though so I feel like you know, they should have access to water all over but they come back for the food but they're eating bugs and vegetables and all kinds of stuff all day long if you could see this red beet that I grew I didn't plan to eat it, I was just going to feed it to the rabbits. Uh, it turns out the ra it's not really that great to feed too much of that to the rabbits. But the chickens love it, they've just been devouring it. Also, purchased a Olympus fig tree and planted it right here next to the chicken coop. You can see I let the, I didn't water it and within one day the leaf was just absolutely fried. Curious chickens. No, don't get curious about the pigeon pea. Mm -mm. But they love it back here. It's really rewarding to watch them enjoy. See, I planted some sugar cane down there. That's green sugar cane. A lot of this chop and drop 
composting that I've been doing, in place composting. And they love that because it's just loaded with bugs. <laughs> so weird the chicken movements they make sometimes. Look at that. What is that? This rooster is just loving this nice warm cement pad. I bet you he'll start to go to sleep. They just seem to form a position which is most comfortable to them and then just fade off into La La Land. <laughs> so interesting. He likes to be outside the coop. It's almost like he's guarding the coop already. And all the hens have gone inside. So you can probably see that this pathway isn't completed. We're still in a state of partial construction, but I'll continue that work. Got to clean up this area. Got these banana trunks I need to turn into banana mulch. That's actually most of what's back in here. And these bananas have been thriving. I just gave it a huge bucket full of worm tea. So already starting to see the benefits of that. It just makes it so vigorous. It's crazy. Ah, the old papaya leaf. I look at these things as excellent, excellent, easily broken down. Chop and drop. It's constantly dropping. Oh, look at this, the time of the year. Look at that. Is that incredible? Got to smell that. Wow. It's incredible. One of the best smelling things I've ever smelled. <laughs> And look at the color in that flower. Plumeria is an amazing, amazing flower. Got to have them if you're in a tropical place, as far as I'm concerned. And got to have color. Like these crotons, very basic. You know, you can get this one anywhere. Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, they all have them. And then the more exotic crotons to add that green contrast. And cool to see how that kind of Bob Rossi or backyard moment can happen there. It's really cool. Yeah, I hope this inspires you to put stuff into your yard and create a little Zen paradise of your own. Meditative paradise. The strawberry tree continues to do very, very well. Jamaican cherry, Montingia, whatever you call it in your area. Very well. Glad I purchased one at the nursery. That's why I think I'm going to follow my urge to go down to Wabasso to this little nursery I found and see what they have. I think they had these trees last when I was there. I don't want any more of these because I've already got three of them. But uh, not to say I wouldn't grow another one from seed, but I just wanted to have one that was setting fruit. That's why I purchased this one from the nursery. The other two I grew from seed. This is a good variety because you can grow it easily from seed. But it is delicate. It's one of these trees that you have to be careful as you grow them in small stages. I've got some other small fruit trees that I grew recently that are doing pretty well. Uh, this Persian mulberry was grown from a cutting. The series I did, you can check out the origins of that thing. It was actually on a live stream. I, I potted that. But then this, look at this thing. This is this is a star fruit tree which has just been destroyed by the chickens. And certainly this moringa tree is just in desperate times. But it'll it'll grow. It'll come back. I'm just I just need to put a ring around it, and I'll start feeding it rabbit manure and worm tea. Keep it watered. It'll come right back. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a ring maybe around this one area here with animal cage. And that'll be my zone to grow chicken-proof things. And then for anything else, potted plants, etc., I'll just go ahead and put them up on the grow table. So again, this permaculture setup in my yard could be any yard. But you know, everything serves a function. And I need a little vegetable garden because I want to continue to grow a lot of vegetables for the bunnies. So we can't have the chickens destroying that capability. Got to set the boundaries, systems compatible with other systems. That's what I'm going to do, but not today. I'll video that when I do it. 
so you can get a scale for about how hard it is to have chickens or easy it is to have chickens. Man, these Tommy Atkins mangoes are just championship size. Almost down to the ground. I predicted that they were going to reach the ground this year and they get closer every day. The bounty of mangoes is simply amazing. Game changer amount this year. If you look back in the different years of me showing mango harvests, this is clearly the best ever. This, particularly when it comes to the Hayden mango, which is certainly my favorite. It, it does have fiber, which some people don't like, but man, is it delicious. I love the flavor of these the most. It's a very common mango, very good. And you can see it's just loaded. Absolutely loaded. <laughs> Look at this. This one's just about ready. Almost starting to get that light green soon. You feel the weight of these things. I mean, they are really. Really heavy. Ooh, those chickadees running around. Went back for a little snack. Now back around exploring. They they do actually seem somewhat exhausted at the end of the days, and I think it's just because they've had open air fun. Back to the roosting bar. chicken waterer to the bunny enclosure. Bunnies actually, I think, curious about it, but have not had any drinks out of it that I've seen. But uh, this has worked out pretty well. I just tied it up into the fig tree. And I still continue to scan every day for the ripened figs because there are so many figs on this tree everywhere you look. So it's just a matter of ripening. It's weird because I get, start to get superstitious. I think this side of the tree is where the ripe ones seem to happen first. Is it? Oh, first ripe sit. First ripe fig of the season. First one. Wow, eat your backyard. That's right. Man, I get stoked on the first fig of the season. Now that the first one comes in, they'll all start coming in. There it is, brown turkey fig. Now. It might not look right because it's not purple, but it is actually ripe. And you can tell just by squeezing a little bit. That's why it's, I can tell just by looking at it because I know this tree like the back of my hand. But now I'm scanning around to see if there are other figs ripe. For some reason, the north side of the tree always seems to give the ripe figs first. I can say that after doing this for 20 years. Okay, I don't see any others. All right, we'll keep our eyes open. But let's try this one. Let's give it a try. Amazing. I love figs so much. That's why I have five varieties growing now. <laughs> it's funny. This sunflower was knocked over by the chickens this morning. They tried to roost on it. it didn't work out. chicken destruction but that's all right we'll take this and feed those buns already have some sunflower that we've been giving them give that to them later hey Penelope want some sunflower seeds mmm nothing but uh Bunny like Penelope loves more than leaves. Sunflower leaves. And they get so excited because you can smell the sunflower leaves from far away and they smell them right away and get very excited. That's why. Look at Thumper. Oh, Thumper. I know what you like. I know it. I'm giving you some too. Circle of life. And lots of bunny manure being produced all the time. Look at that. 
that is permaculture gold, my friends. Easy permaculture gold. Alright, Thumps, I haven't forgotten about you. Once I'm here, stick it through the cage thing. You will pull it right through. Worm farm. Looking good. Looking good. I've got to relocate this too to a shady spot in the yard. That must happen. The reflective surface is good, but it's getting way too hot. It dries out fast, so it was fine in the winter, but time for a move. Okay, let's see if we can get the chicks to go back in the coop. Where are you, chickies? Do not see them. Come on, chick chick. Come on, chick chick. There you are. Come on, chick chick. Come on, chick chick. Come on. Come on, chick chick. Chick chick.